Hey y'all, Noons here. Welcome back to Noons Airborne RC. If it's your first time here, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button so you can get notified for future content. Well, we got over here all nicely said and done, our MiG-15 from Freewing Motion RC, uh, commonly known as in the Cold War and everything, Magoyan Gervernovich mit Pitsnatsich Fagot. It is a 64 millimeter, and we're gonna get down into down and dirty right after we roll this intro. And we're back y'all. Like I said earlier in the intro, we have the MiG-15 Freewing from Motion RC. Uh, to me, it's a great uh, first DDF if you're looking at it. The price isn't too shabby, $109. It's a complete glue. There's no screws that goes on with this. I did not do a build video, but I did do some clips to go ahead and show you some of the mods. Um, tails glued on, elevators glued on, the wings, everything is glued on. Uh, went together fairly easy. Uh, one thing that I will say is uh, when they went ahead and they glued these two halves together, the rear end was one side was a little more than the other. You can go ahead and see right here in the back, it's not leveled. And uh, what that ended up doing is it gave me an angle right here because the um, rudder assembly gets glued directly on it. So as you can see, I got some white here. I went ahead and I leveled it out and I shaved it down. I went ahead and cracked the problem. Nothing too big. Uh, that's definitely something uh, a novice can go ahead and see. Uh, I must just, uh, this one plane right here, I've had other planes come for free wing and motion RC come flawless, so no ding against them. Uh, the rear end does come with the spar. So it does come a little easier to glue. Um, I went ahead and I sanded all the painted parts and I glued it, made everything was all true. Uh, wings, they go ahead and they glue on. Uh, one thing that I did do is I made a carbon spar. Uh, basically it goes from this fence right here to this fence right here. It gives it a lot of rigidity on the wings since I am gonna be belly landing this to start. So I'm gonna go ahead and clip that in here. And as you guys can see there, uh, it was not too hard to put the spar through. Anybody could pretty much do it. It's fairly simple. I went ahead and I picked up the three millimeter carbon rods from Amazon. I got like four of them for like $6 shipped. Um, that does give it extra strength. Do you need to do that? I don't think so, but I'm landing on asphalt, so I want as much rigidity on it as possible. So I went ahead and I did that, uh, just like the a little insurance purposes. Um, other than that, guys, it's pretty much stock. Um, I will be going and doing a video for the landing gear that I went ahead and I picked up uh, for it. Uh, Motion did uh, send the correct landing gear out. Thank you, Motion, for that. So let's go ahead and open this up and see what we got inside and how I laid it out. So here's the hatch. Uh, one other thing I did is I put a piece of tape right here up in front uh, so it's easier to pull this on and off. So let's go ahead and pull it off. And you can see how easy that went ahead and I, that came out. So let's go ahead and look at it on the inside. Go ahead and move this down over so you guys can get a better view. I have the Motion RC Admiral 2200 up here in the front. I have a Spectrum AR637 Tango. As you can see, I got it sideways. I did have to move the ESC right there uh, back about maybe a half inch to go ahead and incorporate everything. Uh, one tricky thing for me was to get the antennas as far away from the EC and uh, the battery as possible. Some of the wires are ran, uh, running by the battery and the ESC, but the most important parts are on the outside. So right here, for me to get my 90 degrees, I ran one, I cut into the fuse right there and a piece of scotch tape, and I got one hanging out the side, which is pretty much gonna be protected unless you crash. And I got one running right here down the duct within a plastic tube and i got this little red so it kind of hides it up in there so you really don't see much and that what that does is it gives me this one going forward and this one going this way so it gives me my 90 degrees so i won't go ahead and lose any rf hopefully 
It is pretty tight in there, so you don't have too much room. Uh, 2200 is on the high side, but on everybody else that I see on the forums, this is where you want to go ahead and go. Nothing lighter, or she'll be a little tail heavy because of the big empennage. Another mod I do if you guys belly land, zip ties, the perfect skid. So what I do everybody is I just go ahead and I get my cheap no thrills glue gun and I'm going to go ahead and throw a bead of glue right down here, down the middle. Measure it out, I need a little more. And I will take my zip tie and I will glue this on. All right, sorry about that. You guys heard the doorbell ring. That was a neighbor asking me to help move the fridge. So now that we got that done and I got my battle wounds, we're gonna go back and do our next part, which is gonna be on the tanks. So same thing, we're gonna go ahead and run a bead of hot glue right down the middle, straight as possible. And then we're gonna go ahead and take our zip tie strip and we're gonna lay it on there. The great thing about hot glue is this will hold up for many landings. And if it does ever come off, it's hot glue. It's easy to go ahead and take off and put a new one back on. So we'll go over here and we'll do our next one. Push it down, make sure we got good contact. And that's it. Now we got our landing skids so we won't damage our plane. As far as other mods, um, I did drive some carbon rods down the vertical stabilizer. It did not have any. So what I did is I had some one and a half millimeter carbon rod that I had lying around. And I threw one right down through the center right here to go ahead and pin this and lock this in down into where the thrust comes out. And also I threw one right here where you see the white spot. We all know that that's Gorilla Glue. And I rammed that at an angle about up to right here. And as you can see, it does not move whatsoever. Just to give it that little extra stability on it. Um, as far as future mods, you guys might have noticed that I do have these two perfectly squared notch outs right here on the bottom. And that's basically to accept the landing gear from the other 64 millimeters, as you can see. Uh, nice and cheap, $12 for the complete mod, including the front steering wheel. Uh, this is just the teaser, perfectly square. You'll be taking this, epoxying it in there, and voila, you have fixed gear on the 64 millimeter, and it is now not gonna be a belly lander. You'll be able to take it off and steer it down the runway. So if you guys are interested in that mod, go ahead and stay tuned. That video is coming out pretty soon. We will also will have the maiden on this, hopefully this weekend if the weather cooperates. And that's about it, y'all. So get out there, go flying, and get some. Noon's out. Get some.